بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں نسلان علیکم پاکستان گڈ ٹو سی آل آف یو بیک ایٹ کارپوریٹ گورننس ان دا لاسٹ فیو سیشنز وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ وسل بلوئنگ اٹس امپیکٹ اٹس ٹیک ہولڈرز ہاؤ اٹ از ڈن اٹس ڈفرنٹ ایلیمنٹس واٹ وسل بلوئنگ از پروٹیکٹڈ بائی اینڈ ہاؤ از اٹ دیٹ دی وسل بلو از کانٹریبیوٹنگ ٹوڈ دی بیٹرمنٹ آف دی آرگنائزیشن اینڈ دی اکانمی ایز اے ہول Uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be talking about the different types of whistleblowing and we are going to see uh, how whistleblowers tend to do things differently and uh, they can be internal or external. And uh, again, whistleblowers are usually a category of informants who take utmost risk in bringing out certain undesired happenings taking place in organizations. The quantum and the quality of risk taken by them has seldom uh, been a parallel in the history of the organization. So again, uh, in the history of an organization, whistleblowing is usually just done maybe one or twice because uh, when there is a whistleblower, then there are drastic changes which take place within the organization. And usually what happens is, is that all of the systems become uh, much more integrity focused and less discretionary, less discriminatory, less biased and definitely uh, prone to anti-corruption. Now, again, when we're looking at all of this, then this becomes historical in the context of that particular organization. Uh, the interest and intention of whistleblowers is often to mitigate the loss arising out of the wrongdoings of the insiders of the organization. Common among the whistleblowers and formants are that they work for some category of the stakeholders. So again, uh, just like mentioned in the previous session, that when we're talking about whistleblowers, then they're trying to mitigate the loss because if that loss or that wrongdoing continues, then the whole organization can collapse. While the whistleblower if they are able to blow the whistle and inform the authorities and the authorities then take consideration of that whistle blowing, there are higher chances that the organization is going to emerge more successful and more profit oriented. So that is what whistleblowers are basically doing. Now, in types of whistle blowing, there is something which is called uh, peer reporting. Whistleblowers may come to act against their superiors or their peers. When blows, whistle blowing involves the disc disclosure of information, regarding a peer's illegal, immoral, or harmful practices, it is referred to as peer reporting. So uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, what we see is that uh, when the uh, whistleblowing is done uh, about the same level, horizontally, or it is done vertically upwards, then uh, it is about uh, peer reporting, and that is how it is looked upon. Uh, we see that peer reporting can also relate to organizational crime and does not only focus on occupational crime only. There are two types of whistleblowers, internal and external. Now. When we are talking about internal whistleblowing, then it refers to people or managers within the organization who are higher up the organizational uh, hierarchy. So what usually happens is, is that before the whistleblower goes outside the organization, they usually file a formal complaint or blow the whistle within the organization. And that can be any chief, chief executive officer, chief officer, chairman, board of directors, or some uh, human resource representative or direct line managers. And what we see is, is that they forward the complaint to them and they expect that something should be done. But if something is not done and we see that uh, the person has used different uh, internal communication channels, uh, could be hotlines, could be uh, the email, could be uh, some uh, chatting platform or something like that, could be WhatsApp. So again, we see that even though the whistle has been blown, but nothing is happening, then the second level would be external whistle blowing. It refers to the disclosure of information outside the organization and includes media, politicians, public protectors, government bodies, regulatory bodies, interest groups and enforcement agencies. So again, uh, what we see is that the insider uh, and the whistleblower uh, first tries to ring the bell and do things uh, within the organization. But when that is not possible, then they go outside the organization talking to media, politicians, public protectors, different regulatory bodies like Securities Exchange Commission of Pakistan, like the National Accountability Bureau, like the Federal uh, Investigation Agency, uh, like FBR, like uh, the, the, the uh, State Bank of Pakistan, and all of these different bodies or enforcement agencies, which can be looking into all of these areas so that whatever whistleblowing uh, is, telling, is uh, telling and informing, that can be managed and also the organization can move forward in a better way. Uh, external whistleblowing, the appropriate whistleblowing procedures for whistleblower to first internally report and then report to a law agency uh, and finally then to media and politicians 
so that their voice can be heard and also resonated uh, across the board. Now, in the types of whistleblowing, they are also uh, open or anonymous whistleblowing. Open whistleblowing is when the identity of the whistleblower is known to the public through the disclosure of the identity. Anonymous whistleblowers are those who are keep the identity secret as in the case of Mr. Shankar Sharma who disclosed the wrongdoings in Tata Finance in India. So, again what we see is, is that uh, usually most of the time uh, the whistleblowing is anonymous because the person uh, does not want to become a victim of, of, uh, of retaliation, of retribution uh, or of someone's anger. And secondly, uh, sometimes they are disclosed, so that would be open whistleblowing while most of the time it is anonymous and just like I mentioned that most of the um, mega cases globally, uh, there uh, the whistleblower was kept anonymous just to make sure that he or she would not be suffering. Uh, there are dutiful and willful whistleblowers. Dutiful whistleblowers are those who are generally given the responsibility to bring to light any wrongdoing in the organization. For example, auditors of the company are expected to report any mall practices in financial statements. So, they are dutiful uh, uh, whistleblowers. And then we see uh, free will whistleblowers are those who are not bound by any obligation, but they themselves take the step for reporting the wrongdoing. So, it could be anyone within the organization and uh, it could be someone from a different line altogether, from a different department, from a different division, uh, managing different products, but has the information with him or her and they tend to do it and that is more uh, free will uh, whistleblowers. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when we are looking at the different types of whistleblowing, then we see that uh, there are internal or external, we see that they are uh, anonymous or free will, we see that there can be dutiful whistleblowers and the most important thing is, is that what type of mechanism exists within the organization to receive this information and then process it in such a way that whatever has been identified is taken care of and the uh, losses are cut based upon those small practices or those wrong practices. Thank you so much.